Okay, I'm going to call this meeting to order. I'm going to call this meeting to order. It being three o'clock of the City Council work session agenda, being Tuesday, November second, year of our Lord, 2021, 3 p.m. Uh, invocations. Who's going to lead us in invocation? Will be Council Member uh, Steve Thompson. So if everybody will please rise, and we will proceed. Thanks for the warning. <laughs> Heavenly Father, bless this day, bless this council. Watch over us to make decisions for the citizens of Odessa. Guide our, our wisdom and guide our thoughts and let, let us do it in a kind and gentle way and so that we do what's best for the city of Odessa. Uh, bless all of our staff and uh, this new training facility we're so proud of. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. You can be seated. Good America. Get her Item one will be uh, Animal Shelter Advisory Committee update, Susie Clark and uh, City Secretary Grimaldo. Thank you, Mayor and Council. I just wanted to give a quick report. I have on your table there, you have a uh, Animal Shelter Advisory Committee list of all the members that serve on the board as well as the attached attendance sheet. Um, I just wanted to updated that uh, reached out to the members and uh, most of them do wish to continue ser serving except for Joyce Trower. Uh, she will not be able to continue serving so I will put that on the next agenda for council's consideration and I will forward those applications to you for those interested that are serving. I did not hear back any messages with uh, Heather Silva who is the representative of And we still been having issues as far as the quorum to be able there, to meet. There will be a meeting uh, coming up in November, and I did tell each member that there is an attendance requirement that they have to be there. If you'd just be able to keep us updated, because there are some things that the board has to be able to make decisions, and I know that uh, there's been some expression by the staff over there that without quorum, without the meetings, haven't been able to proceed. So I've asked uh, Ms. Grimaldo to make the attendance um, uh, for the council be aware of the attendance and see if we have to take action to make sure that the, the quorum doesn't become an issue. So thank you for that. A any questions? Really, Kelly, isn't our next meeting December? No, I believe we were going to have it in November because of the December holiday. Okay. You're getting Christmas off. Yeah. No, no, you're fine. Oh, thank you. Thank you for that. Women's 
in the midst of all of this, how can we expect God to take place if our prayers are not effective and our studies are just too much? Quick question. Um, what ordinances do does exist in the county? I, 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 is, there, I, there isn't. Okay. Another question, leash law. Does that include cats? Pardon? Does that include cats? Really? I was posed with that question 25 years ago, and I never saw, how do you leash a cat? <laughs> <laughs> so I thought, okay. But I was posed with that question 25 years ago, so when you bought that up, that really made me think of that. Um, so another real question, and, and I'll let you. Um, sure. The other one would be about, can you put it on the agenda as far as the advisory board of how can we proceed to be able to try to influence one way or another about the county and try to come up with any type of ordinance that would assist us, uh, you know, spay and neuter and breed in the dumping. And it, you know, I guess it's an issue. Um, you know, it's worth a shot. You know, so if y'all could take that up at one point, you know, let's get the quorum uh, situation <laughs> resolved and then go forward and see if we can add that to agenda and see if, you, if, if your advisory board can take that on and come up with any suggestions that we may be able to uh, go forward and proceed in uh, negotiating with the county and see if we can come up with something that will be able to help be a relief. Yeah, and this might be a good way to kind of delve into that and how, you know, our district has, well, we don't have any laws to pass just now or to look at or just what can we do. So with the board getting the idea on that, that might be helpful. Is it economics is going to a larger number of uh, abandoned and uh, dumped uh, animals? Okay. Mr. Thompson, go ahead. That's, that's my question. Can, the county can, they can affect an ordinance to help us out, can they? Now, they don't have to just follow state law. That's my question. Well, I'm not positive on that because the county is under the state law, but the city is under the city in its city. So there's no state law. Well, why not read the state law? They, the state law does give the county uh, commissioners the authority to enact. That's, right. that's my question. So yeah. So what I'd like to do is direct it to Natasha, and I wish you to get a hold of the, she get a hold of the county attorney and see what they think they can or can't do. I think it's very important. I, I, that's a huge issue, and we're, and again, we're taking care of everything. Well, let, let's, so. let's, let's get some. Right now, we got Natasha under a lot of things. Yeah, right I know. Let's let her get through let's, that. Let's put it on yeah. the bottom of her. So let's uh, let, let's let the advisory yeah. board take it over. And then work together, and then uh, get yeah. to a point what you know what you can and do. Reach out and, and and invite one of the commissioners who's applicable to be able to work, and then let's lay that groundwork. And then once we come up with a, an instrument that we can work with, then we can take it over to our legal department. Well, here, here's another thing that I've been posed with the last six months is uh, uh, laying hens, laying egg hens. Uh, I think the surrounding counties around Hector County all allow it. And I think that we passed an ordinance, what, 25 years ago that we're dealing with the roosters. And so we've outlawed that as far as an ordinance and been approached several times about re, uh, re-looking at that and what we can come up with. I've asked all the parties, interested parties, to to uh, come up with uh, what they've seen at the state law and what other uh, communities have uh, have adopted, yet none of them want to do the work they want us to do it for them. So that's another thing that I may be asking with the advisory uh, committee to look into um, and see uh, what is going around. In, cause for the reason why the issue came up to head is because what we saw during the pandemic and uh, and they want to use it as a food source. But I can see how it can get out of hand really fast. And so I uh, want to proceed with caution. And maybe that's something else y'all can put on your plate. Go ahead, Council. Any other questions? I want to, if Kelly, if you don't mind, you know, part of our, our problem that we have with 
that animal shelter does go back to the county, what would you estimate about 40% maybe of the of the animals that the shelter receives or or originate well, the from the county? The restrictions that we put in place on intake is a it's a balancing situation. Kelly, would you come, come up here? Oh, sure. That way we can get you on record. I can say my voice is. Yeah, yeah but, I thought but, it was but pretty loud. Sorry. But we got we have, but we got to be able to get so, you on record. So we're trying to follow all the national standards on best practices for shelters and being no kill. Uh, no kill shelters are considered anything 90% above safe rate. Okay? So there's still that 10% that you can euthanize them. So the problem that we've run into, in order for me to try and move that direction, I have to restrict what comes in. So I run at about an 85% capacity because what goes out when we have some come in, we've got to move them through. If I fill the shelter to capacity to what we have even right now, I have no space. I have to euphemize what's inside. So you bring in a dog off the street, the county brings a dog in off the street, no testing, no nothing, and now I have to turn around and go into my shelter and euthanize a healthy animal. Well, that makes no sense. So I run it at about an 85% capacity so that I have that room to move. The problem that we're seeing right now is there is a lot of distemper, parvo, uh, all kinds of diseases out there, non-vaccinated, all kinds of stuff like that. And when we bring them into the shelter, just automatically bring them in, that's the cost of the city. Now I've got to treat them, do this, do that, do that. So I started restricting what we're bringing in from the county. Because if they don't have any laws out there, well, they've got to help us out over here. So if I have room, they bring in a healthy animal, we'll take a look at it and bring it in. So we have reduced the number of what's come in from the county, and we honestly have had a healthier shelter. With all the testing that we're doing, all the vaccinating we're doing, all the money that we're using towards the city money toward these animals and restricting here, it's getting better. Now, I'm not saying that the county is to blame for all the distemper and parvo it's not. But there's a large portion of it out there. So are you te are, are we are you testing in the shelter for that? Yes. So that's that's a, that's a city that's, expense. That is a city expense. Any animal that comes in that we accept in because we have the space, the first thing they do is they get temperament tested, they get temperature tested. If there is a, a, a fever we suspect a dog has a fever, they don't even come inside the building. And we hold them until we can see if it calms down or whatever. And then we test them for distemper, parvo, giardia. We 40X test them for heartworm. We do all this testing before they walk in the door. What's the average cost per animal? Oof. Uh, just ballpark. Just a ballpark? When you spay, neuter, vaccines, the whole nine years, you're probably at $200 an hour. And then we have to euthanize and bring in so I've got, let's say I have 31 animals in the, in the adoption building right now, times 200 if that's a good figure, and then somebody comes in and says, I want you to take this dog. Well, which one do I euthanize in here? And we've been feeding them. That's, that doesn't include feed. And, you know, it's kind of like, what? Are, so that's why I don't run at capacity. What's the, uh, what's the identification, uh, identification rate for and how are you keeping track of that? You know, they're counting in. Because it's in our system, our computer system. So when someone comes in, and um, there's no drop off, right? No. Okay, so th so basically you're asking the residents for their, for their okay. We get their driver's license, their ID, any form. And that's stuff. how you're identifying And it's their... only for Edgar County, so we won't take anything from Midland, Monahans, and stuff. And Midland won't take anything from Edgar County. It's, it's just Edgar County, that's it. It's our end. Good and that, but that doesn't include the ones that get dumped at the door. No, like today. And that's what I was telling her today. I came back from lunch and somebody had pulled in the parking lot, dumped the dog in the parking lot, took off as we were pulling in. And it was chasing, trying to chase it out of the parking lot. So that's why I'm dirty because I chased it down the body. <laughs> The, the, the dog or the, or, or the car? Well, I couldn't get the car. I'm not that <laughs> But I did get the dog, cute little dog. But that's what they do to us. They'll dump them right at the door and turn around and drive off. Wow. It's, it's crazy. And that's why, too, just know that's probably why you probably get more complaints about strays mm -hmm. because of the restrictions. But 
we, what are we going to do? Are yeah. we going to euthanize healthy animals? Or are we going to restrict and try and... We work with a lot of rescues, um, big rescues. Susie's one of them. And so we work with a lot of rescues to turn animals around and get them out as quick as we can. And we do a lot of events. We just did three events and we adopted 27 animals. That's great. So, but I took in 13 today. <laughs> are, are we picking up? Are we picking up animals outside the city limits, or are they, that's the county? I understand. Do they pick them? They pick them up. They pick them up. And okay. So, so I didn't know who's. To us okay. And but they, they say, "Well, you take." Them. So they do. Have, they have vehicles to pick them up. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's what I was curious about. Right. But if I you have to that. treat those animals, do we give that cost back to the county or? Mm -hmm. Good leverage. Good leverage. Uh, mm -hmm. that, that's what we've been talking about. Exactly. Yeah. And I will, I will add that how imperative it is that these dogs are just super and thoroughly tested because that keeps the shelter clean mm -hmm. and operating. I mean, we've had it where we, you know, you get a sick dog and then you get another sick dog and you end up shutting the facility down and come in and you have a mass cleaning and not, nothing survives. And, and um, I mean, hats off because they are limited on staff, very limited on staff. There's never enough people to clean. I mean, that is a big, big job in order to keep these animals safe and get them adopted in a, you know, a healthy environment. Because just because they don't test positive for parvo or distemper on day one doesn't mean they are carrying it mm -hmm. and they may break with it in you know, a few days and then we've, and then we've adopted out a health, an unhealthy puppy mm -hmm. out into the community yeah. and, you know, and, and we're spreading disease. So you know, they've just done a fabulous job. And, you know, it's a happy place. To, it's a happy place as it can be, as old as it is. It's a good place to go. It's a good. Kelly's made it a good place. And we're getting there. Yeah. Thank you very much. Any uh, any further discussion? Ladies, thank you very much. Thank we'll you. do whatever we can to help thank you. you. Thank you. We're going to move on to item two. Consider economic development agreement between ODC and NetOps Communication LLC. Mr. Edgman. You're not, Mr. Mr. Edgman. <laughs> I'm Tracy Gilsey. Uh, Tim was not able to be with us this, this, this afternoon. Um, I was just uh, curious what happened. Mitchell Block is the uh, gentleman that is, uh, has requested this uh, grant, and he was going to be here to do a presentation for you guys, but he was unavailable today, and he is asking if he could have a 30-day extension. Uh, he's finishing finalizing some of his um, um, engineering and we'll have a more comprehensive uh, projection on the cost and the timeline of the project within the next 30 days. So it'll take 30 days to be able yes, to get that to the council? Yes. Okay. We would ask you to ask this today and we can continue to have 30 days for it. Council, is there any, any discussion on this? Is everybody fine with the 30 days? Sure. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. We're going to move to item three. Consider purchase of tra traffic signal poles. How? Didn't I not say that? I'm sorry. I was going to start off the meeting with you. You just got to remind me of that. <laughs> From here on out, let's make a note on this. That when we, we have Hal on the agenda, he starts off us regardless. <laughs> there you go, Hal. Go for awesome. it. Um, this agenda item is for the purchase of signal poles. Second, four is Fodrin and 56. The funding for these poles, the first two uh, locations are, are funded through the supplemental uh, project that council awarded uh, for those two intersections. Then the final two uh, sets of signal poles, I'm going to use the street maintenance money for signal improvement. The total cost of these signal poles is $203,960. Council, any discussion? I just had one question, Hal. The one on Don and 52nd, when is that one expected to go up? What I'm doing is I'm working on the plans for Golden Yukon, Fod, uh, Fodrin, Tres Hermanas, and Don and 52nd. I'm going to bundle them all together as one package and put them out to bid. Six months. Okay. Um, I, I, I've been told by the vendor that I shouldn't expect any undue delays for the signal poles. But I'm kind of holding my breath. 
And uh, by the time I go out, award the bid, get the contractor online, I'm, I'm thanked. Is that that area we, that we've had problems with, where really? we've had the fatalities? Yes. Is that it? Yes, okay. it is. Uh, Council, any further discussion? Yeah, I've got a question on, <clears throat> shouldn't the one on 56th and Fodry come out of that Fodry project? Shouldn't the funding for that poll? Well, we certainly <coughs> could, but what I want to do is I, I, I want to buy the polls now and, and make sure I have them ready to go by the time we go to construction so they're not delayed. So I, I figured I would just use the signal maintenance so I can buy them now. That's the only thing. And is the light on Dick, uh, Dixie and Yukon, is that in the city? Golden. 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 Golden Yukon, a couple years that, ago, we took in Yukon Road. So Yukon Road is city maintenance, but it's surrounded by the county. But the intersection is ours. Does it run from Barditch to Barditch, or has it? Basically, yep. And it goes all the way to the loop? Uh, just past West County Road. Like one intersection past West County Road is city maintenance. Okay. So, yeah. So, pretty much the whole road. I mean, it's yeah. past that. It's yeah. Not much. yeah. So, uh, so, yeah, that's that's I'm, ours. I knew it was in it's Slaymire, but not that far west. Yeah. Okay. Just for a couple years now. Mm -hmm. Any further discussion? How? Thank you very much. Move on to item four Floyd Gwynn Park construction update. Mr. Batten. Uh oh, we've got we got visual. Oh my God! <laughs> no, no, Kyle. Hi, no, we How you doing, Cal? Doing an excellent, excellent job. Right. Super, super high visibility project. Been a lot of fun. We've got a lot going on out there. If y'all been by lately, you might have seen that the parking lots are going in, which is probably one of the most visible things we've got going on out there. Thirty percent of almost thirty percent of the sidewalk, the perimeter of the sidewalk, is going in, uh, and you'll see more of that happening in the next few weeks. They have all of the pedestals, the, which is the uh, foundations for the pedestrian lighting along the sidewalk. They're all in except for six. They have six more to go. A lot of activity on the northern parking lot. That's been a brand new parking lot. It's expanded. The curb and gutter is up. They were out there today doing the. Uh, rolling, getting the, the subsurface ready to go for laying on their second surface, then they'll do their emulsion, then the asphalt. So that'll be the first big parking lot that'll be finished, will be on the north side. Then they will move to the south side. They're uh, going to do the one that's at 10th. After they get the one on 10th, then they'll expand the one that's on West County Road in front of the gym. Then that will be expanded all along the entire perimeter of the park along our West County Road. The last one that they will do is uh, the one in front of the swimming pool. That's our most problem parking lot. We've got a drainage problem that's there, a swell that's been backed up by uh, debris that and silt, basically, that's, that has landed there for many, many years. The water backs up onto the parking lot. This There will be a new swell cut, and we will expand the fence. Uh, on the west side of the swimming pool will go out about another 20 feet. Then there is going to be a swell that will take all the water across the park and we'll dump on Park Street. So they've just about got that swell completed and the uh, baseball fields are all to grade. If y'all been by there and seen a lot of activity going on with the baseball fields, the priority for completion of the park itself in phases would be the baseball field is what we're trying to get finished first. They're uh, about 30% ahead of schedule on most of the construction. They're 10% uh, completed on the, the restroom concession stand building. They had to get some permits. Their first testing failed and they had to go back and do some compaction on their uh, subsurface for their foundation. But they've got all that taken care of and now the wing walls are going up on the restroom concession stand building and they'll progress and get caught back up. What I'm really excited about is that they still are at about 30% ahead of schedule and that's um, very unusual for construction. Knock on wood. Definitely knock on wood. Considerably under budget. Steve, um, you're saying that you're moving water 
from our uh, south side and you're moving it west. Yeah, it's going to go uh, through there. Mm -hmm. So yeah. you're, moving it, you're moving the water north and out to park. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay. Some of it's it. It's a long way. There's, and there's, well, there's going to be a peak right here, and some of it that lands in this area will be diverted and go this way. Okay, so we're going to dump in nothing to the west. Correct. Okay. Well, that, that's why I was going to ask, you know, you, you, legally you can't do that. The other question is the compaction. Are we still using the, uh, the south side, the north, the southeast side uh, parking lot as a transition for ECISD bus? South this, this one's yeah. south so have, have, have we, did you uh, anticipate that for the excess weight or are we just going with something normal? Well, well because years ago when we were doing that, we were having a lot of breakage in the asphalt, and we, we asked the county to, let's fix it, but you're going to participate because you're using it as a transfer site. Um, ECISD was using it as a bus transfer for their students. Oh, it's, it's their parking for everybody who works at the bus garage now. Okay, so, so but they're not, they're, not using it, they're not using the parking lot to the southeast. The, the big one that's over yeah, that used to be a transfer site. No, no? no? Okay. Pretty much this one. Okay. okay. Yeah, yeah, but I, but you know, years ago, that the southeast was uh, ECIC used that as a transfer, and we were having a lot of issues there. And so, okay, so basically, they're using the southwest. That's theirs. That's what I've seen so far. Yeah. And and, uh, I'm gonna have to give them notice because uh, there's a good 60, 80 cars up there a day. Mm -hmm. So we'll give them at least a two week notice. We also talked about trying to do it maybe during Christmas break to see if we can't rush in there, maybe. But I don't think they can get it done. Uh, Council, any questions? Do you think the ball fields will be open for the season? March. In March. That's, uh, that's when they're going to be complete. Now, we're putting the sod down. It just depends on when the sod comes out of dormancy yeah. and the condition that the field will be in. Now, if we're real lucky, we could maybe look at the end of their season, possibly. Oh. Because uh, if, if they're on a tight time frame as far as play, the, sometimes they're finished as early as June. Mm -hmm. we'll So probably will not get to play. I, I, I can't say it. if you know if we have an early spring mm -hmm. and and it comes out of dormancy. Uh, I'm not making any promises until we get just a little further along mm -hmm. to see how healthy the the sod's going to come back. I understand. And I mean, if it was July, you can put sod down and seven days later you can play on it. Mm -hmm. But it's going to be in dormancy, so we'll just see how. Do you just use common Bermuda or? No, no, no. This is Good. this is sports turf. It's a tip turf. Tip turf. Yeah. yeah. That's, I, I thought maybe that's what it was. It does great. Yeah. Steve or Michael, have you guys been able to put something on the website to show an update yet? I've got a, I have a meeting with Marco to, and I, actually, uh, I'm with who? With Marco to make that happen. Oh. If we could, because yeah. you get a lot of questions about what's going on and, you know, when's it going to be finished and what's, you know, what are these things sticking out of the ground. And I have to give an update every Tuesday to the manager of roads that's on the West County Road. Yeah. So you drive by there and see that mm. you have to give an update. <laughs> me. It would be a lot easier for me if I could just say you'll, you'll get the website. Me too. So that's what I'm saying. If, if you could, I think the community would appreciate it. And just to the council who does not have any reason um, to drive down West County, I would encourage you to go by because just watching it grow has been interesting. So just take some time to go by and see it. It's Y'all have done a great job. Mm -hmm. It's going to be really nice. It's it will. Be a great addition to Augusta, for sure. Well, let's, let's, stay, we, let's hope we stay under budget. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it is a lot. I'd like to redirect some of that money and, uh, uh, and address the, uh, the auditorium. Steve, what, what is the length on the walking path? Or just this much shorter than mile. I thought it was pretty close. It's, it's like nine tenths. Okay. Mm -hmm. Let's just call it a mile. 
That's you can walk be it. Light it too. Oh yeah, I can walk it. <laughs> and it's going to be a little wider than normal, Faster. right, Steve? Yeah, there's never been of eight feet. Eight feet is a minimum, and um, we're it's going to have a real rough texture on it. I always I like to do a heavy burn and dam, so people aren't tripping and fall, mm -hmm. or something slick. So it'll be pretty rough. And we'll we have a truck finished, and it's going to be it's going to be in lighting. At San Jacinto, too. Were we able to, add, I know several people have tied you and I down and asked about the pickle ball to add that to the tennis courts? Yes. Is that? I already, I did a change order, and, and that's going to be coming uh, when they come back to put the nets up. Uh, we're not going to allow them to put the nets up just yet because the second that we put nets up, there's going to be people playing. Mm -hmm. The stripes are already down for basketball, volleyball, and tennis. Then two pickleball, two pickleball courts will go on each tennis court. Okay, what is pickleball? pickleball? I had no idea either, Mayor, until they cornered us. I'm imagining somebody throwing a pickle at each other, so what is it? Do that on the grass. Many, many years ago, there, it, it's, a, it's a short game, and uh, it's kind of like tennis, but you use a big paddle. And uh, there's, uh, it, it is a short version of tennis, basically, and kind of table tennis, sort of. Right, with the heavier wiffle ball? Yeah. So there's not a lot of bounce to it, or a shorter court? So it's, uh, it's a very popular sport very popular. in the uh, senior sector. <laughs> and they Hello. Say, That's what you Hello. Do. No, my, you know, my, I said my hands are expert, is, but she is it, a senior. <laughs> is that what's going on at the senior, at the senior citizens pickleball? <laughs> and they say it's a big sport. I'm going to Google it and see what They say it's a big sport out at the country club. You know, that they should. They built a broken head. One of the largest national tournaments is coming to Horseshoe Bay. Be in that tournament? No. It's huge. All resort areas. It's huge. Our Christmas night ladies going to be one. Everybody's going that direction. Every country club, everybody. Wow. It's huge. Any chance that we can get that national uh, tournament here? Uh -huh. Not with just four courts. The Horseshoe Bay is one of the resort communities. They just they committed to it and they built a bunch of them. Wow. Okay. Uh, any other questions? Thank you very much. Thank you, Steve. Great job. Great job. Thanks, Steve. Great job for holding that up. Thank you. Yeah, excellent. All right. Learn something new, pickleball. Like he what? came up here and didn't ask for money. <laughs> Not too much pickleball down there in the barrio, that's for sure. I never played it either. <laughs> uh, more like, uh, was it dodgeball? Uh, we're going to move up to item uh, number five, consider, uh, consideration to engage in Parks Incorporation to build Rebuild Bob Darrington Water Reclamation. Mr. Kerr. Good afternoon, Mayor and Council. Um, so this first item we have for you is a, the uh, reconstruction of a, uh, uh, one of our mechanical bar screens at the Bob Darrington Water Reclamation plant, our wastewater plant. And so bar screens, these mechanical bar screens are at the front of the plant when the water's first coming in. You want to pull out poppies and things like that. These will go back and catch objects that are uh, actually, I think, So we have two of them at the front of the plant. Uh, one of them, uh, I think we provided some pictures of the package. I hope you've seen. But, uh, but one of them did become damaged this year. It's been in service since 2012. And uh, so we've uh, gone back to the manufacturer and asked them for a quote on rebuilding the unit. And so what they do is they supply all the materials. They come out to the site and they rebuild the unit on site. So we can put it back in service. Uh, that's really the most expert method for us. Um, you, you can purchase a brand new unit and replace it, but that is a uh, higher cost. Uh, it takes a lot longer, not quite a bit longer. But, uh, but anyway, so uh, the cost on this is $141,847. And the funds we're looking to use for this are funds that uh, were allocated by council for repair of our uh, grit collector. So the grit collector is going to take quite a bit more work than we have time and so it's a little more uh, something that we really need to do quicker than the other one so uh, we're looking at those funds for this, this repair. 
Councilor, do you have any questions? Is there a normal life on one of these trains? I mean, 2012 is nine years old, so is that about what you get out of one? Or you no, you probably would hope to get about 20 years or so out of them, but uh, this one had something come in and, uh, and uh, knock it out. We uh, hammered pretty hard from what we could get in. Yeah, because I was, you know, I was just thinking for, I mean, it's fifty thousand dollars, but it's. Will, it, will this new refurbished one have that kind of life, you think? It should. Okay. That'd be my question, though. Yes, sir. Any other questions? Yes, Mr. Kerr, I had a question. Just on the, uh, I was looking at your, at the uh, list that I have here, the sheet. It says on here, uh, on the, I know it's kind of a trivial deal, the, the shipping FOB bring on board. Do you know if that's going to be um, where, the customer pays for the shipping, or because I know shipping, the freight's going up quite a bit. And I know for us it has. I mean, it's it's a big uh, it's a big issue for us. So I just wondering if that's going to be paid by the by the customer, which is us, or uh, that that can be paid by the supplier. That's, my understanding would be that that's that we we receive it at our site to pay for the starting. Okay. Thing. Good. That saves a lot of money. Yes. Any further questions? We're going to move on to item six. Consider award bid for WTP rehab and miscellaneous upgrades to Garney uh, Companies Incorporated. Thank you, Mayor. Council, this is the uh, bids that uh, we have received bids uh, for the reconstruction of the water treatment plant. Uh, the bids for this project were opened on October 21st. Two responsive bids were submitted for the project. The lowest responsive bidder was Garney Companies Incorporated in Missouri with an office in Midland, Texas, in the amount of $71,553,712.63. Uh, bids are within the budget amount for the project. Thoreau Engineers Incorporated, as a design consultant, and, city, and uh, they and city staff have reviewed the bids and recommend awards for bid to Garney and reserving approximately 19% for contingency in the project. What did we originally uh, anticipate? Ten on the uh, contingency. Could um, we maxed out at ninety-five? Right. And then uh, we talked about the contingency. The the consultant in their estimates continue mm -hmm. to maintain some contingency yeah. in terms of what the price may be. The estimate for construction was eighty-three million, and so the bids have come in. Council, do we have any questions? So that leaves you four, fourteen million dollars for contingencies, roughly twenty percent of seventy million. Seventy one, right? right. Yep. It's going to be uh, so we're at. Uh, there's another paragraph here, but the additional was eighty million, so it gets us back about fourteen million dollars. Yeah, and with uh, what is it? What do they say? I mean, nobody knows this, these supply chain issues. I mean, that's why I want to make sure there's enough there because that's a little scary right now for everybody. Yes. So, so the, the overall, and so I'll go ahead and uh, touch on the next paragraph, which is further for Royal Engineers has provided a proposal for phase four of the project. The proposal includes project administration, office services during construction, field services during construction, and post construction, and special services in the amount of $9,437,000. So those uh, those amounts plus the contingency is the $95 million uh, allocated for the project, um, or at least called for in the, uh, the CO issuance. Uh, so happy to answer any questions. Yeah. Council, do you have any questions? Council, do we have any questions? Anybody want to address anything to Mr. Corolla? I think we're good. Uh, thank you, sir. Appreciate it. We went through this a lot quicker than I thought. Um, do I have a motion and a second uh, to go into executive session as authorized by the Texas Government Code, Section 551.071, to consult with attorneys? So moved. Okay. I have a motion by Councilmember Swanner, second by Councilman Mata. All in favor indicate by saying aye. Aye. All opposed indicate by saying nay. Council is now going into the executive session and we will return.
That's scary. Seeing that no action was taken in executive session, do I have a motion to come back to general session? So moved. I have a motion by Council Member Sprawls, second by Council Member White. All in favor, indicate by saying aye. 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 All opposed, indicating by saying nay. Motion passes. We are back in general session. Seeing that there is no more business before the city council, do I have a motion to adjourn? I'm sorry. No action. No action. Yeah, I did say that. I said that we had no action taken in executive session. Do I have a motion to come back into general session? No, we already have a second, and we've already proved it, and we've taken a, 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 an official vote. Who's on first? So, that, but I, I did say that. Yeah. So. And I spoke clearly into the mic so you can verify it. <laughs> so seeing that there is no more uh, business before this city council in this work session, do I have a motion to adjourn? So, so moved. I have a motion by Council Member Willis, second by aye. Council Member Swanner. All in favor indicated by saying aye. Aye. All opposed indicated by saying nay. Motion passes unanimously. Everybody being going home, be careful and stay warm. Thank you, sir. Thank you.